Hello, this is Ms. Schrader. Today we are going to be talking about some of the artwork of Eugene Delacroix. Uh, my students, you need a piece of paper and something to write with. You want to take notes and when you're done, you're giving me between seven and 10 sentences about Eugene Delacroix. We're gonna start with this picture of him. I want you to notice this is a photograph. Um, so we're coming into the modern era. Um, Delacroix was born in 1798 in France. He lived out his life in France, uh, though he did travel quite a bit. And he died in 1863, he was 65, in Paris. He's famous for having been sort of the forefather of the Impressionists, who we're going to get to a little later. Um, and while he was definitely a romantic, he is one of those who passion is the thing. The paintings we're going to look at have a lot of passion in them. Some of them are actually rather gruesome. Um, he enjoyed going to battle scenes or thinking about wars that were taking place during his lifetime and doing paintings about them. This painting is called The Massacre at Chios. It was done in 1824. Um, and one of the things I want you to notice about it to begin with is you've got a huge number of people in the foreground and then it continues to go backward. You have lots and lots of people going back as well. Um, the Chios Massacre was part of the Greek Civil Wars between 1823 and 1825. And this is showing a group of Greek civilians who have been rounded up for enslavement by the Ottoman Empire, the people that the Greeks are fighting against. Um, the Greek Civil Wars, the Greeks are desperately trying to get free of the Ottomans and a huge number of rich and famous people from Western Europe uh, were supporting them and going there and Delacroix went as well. Um, as you look at the painting, at the bottom on the right, you can see a woman grieving because her child is dead, the child who is lying on top of her. Um, we have a lot of people who seem desperate to just survive. Um, on the left, we have a woman who appears to be naked kissing someone. Um, the person that she's kissing, their face is very white. Once again, it looks as though they are probably dead. Um, behind this crowd, can you see the man with the gun? He would have been one of the Ottomans, also the man on the horse. And so the idea is to give you this sense of despair amongst the uh, people of Chios, and also this sense of enragement. You should feel passion about this. This is one of Delacroix's most famous paintings. It's called Liberty Leading the People. It's from 1830. Now, the French started having revolutions against their leaders, I think in the 1790s, influenced by the American Revolution. Um, they just continued to have them over and over again. And Delacroix was inspired by the idea of the French getting liber liberty and not having kings and things. Um, in 1830, there was another revolution. Um, it was against King Charles X. Um, and actually, it wasn't going to be doing anything more than replacing him with another king, Louis Philippe I. Uh, so not a big change, but he's showing it in this beautiful fashion. Uh, the woman is referred to as Liberty, this brave, courageous creature who's going to lead the Parisian people forward uh, against their oppressors. The flag, um, the different colors, the red, the white, and the blue do represent uh, liberty for them today. This is the French flag. Um, you can see one, the people in the foreground lying on the ground dead, um, and then the people behind her coming forward um, to her left, our right behind her, is what seems to be a rather young boy uh, waving guns, you know, cheering, looking excited that he's getting to be a part of this. And so for Delacroix, uh, this 
um, revolution was an exciting one and he shows it very patriotically. And this is one of his most famous pieces. In 1832, um, Delacroix was part of a diplomatic mission to um, Morocco, um, which was at that time controlled by the French. And some of the Moroccans were having a civil war, wanting to get the French out. He did a lot of paintings. This one is called Convulsions of the Tangiers. Um, and it seems to be a group of people perhaps um, rising up, trying to take control of the government, possibly um, fighting amongst themselves. There don't appear to be any French people here, but you can see that people are trying to get away from them, uh, other people on the roofs watching them. So people don't seem to be taking them very seriously. On the other hand, if you look at the picture of the actual group, um, some people sort of to the center left have grabbed somebody. Another person has his arms flailing. Um, so perhaps there is something going on as it um, is. Um, you notice the bright colors, lots of reds, lots of golds and things like that. And the faces are pretty distinctive too. Okay, so Delacroix became friends with a lot of writers and artists of his time period, and he painted this lady. Her name is Amantine Lucille Aurora Dupin de Franculiel, which I probably butchered her name, um, but she was a writer who used the name George Sand. Uh, and I'm going to call her George Sand because it's so much easier to say than her actual name. Um, but what I love about the painting is it really does give you a hint of the Impressionist artists coming up. Um, a lot of really strong colors in the background, in her dress and things like that. Um, her hair is a little vague. Um, a lot of things are really vague and a lot of things are more um, strongly shown. Her face is done with a great deal of detail. So are her hands. And so this is hinting at what the Impressionists are going to be doing later on. This piece is called Christ on the Sea of Galilee. It was done in 1841. Um, and once again, I'm noticing the strong movement toward the Impressionist artwork. Um, you can almost see the brush strokes in the water in the garments that they're wearing and even in the muscle tone that they are showing um, on the individuals there. Uh, some of the faces are actually very blurry, but you'll notice that the face of Christ, which is towards the top and on the left, is very easily noticed. It's very clear and crisp. He is very clear and crisp while the other people around him are actually rather blurry. I also am very interested in this squiggle of white light um, to the right side from the middle, um, which to me might represent hope. Uh, if you know the story, they're out in the boat on the, on, on the, on the Galilee and there's a storm on, on and Christ is asleep and his people are waking up saying, sir, we're about to die. And he says, why are you waking me up? And he stands up and he calms the ocean and he goes back to bed. This painting is called Arab Horses Fighting in a Stable. It's from 1860, so only about three years before he died. Um, I want you to notice the really strong observation of movement. Uh, the horses seem to be moving. The people seem to be moving. Um, I want you to notice the light source uh, is being shown from the window on the right, and the light is cascading in. You can even see it reflected on the wall behind the horses. You can see the humans um, trying to bring calm to the situation. There's a lot of clutter and chaos going on in this, which is perfect for Delacroix. Remember, he was all about the passion. Mm -hmm. 
This is a self-portrait of Delacroix done in 1837. All right, my students, you are giving me between seven and 10 sentences about what you learned about the artwork of Eugene Delacroix. Um, you wanna give me what you find interesting, educational, and important. Thank you.